so I want to do a little video about how we'd use this forward motion concept through a tune like uh, All the Things You Are, right? Um, and I chose All the Things You Are because it's a very common tune, gets played a lot, um, is quite difficult because there's lots of changes and lots of chords and key changes too. And thirdly, because the melody tends to stick around with the thirds of the chords. So. kind of means that we can practice resolving to the thirds in our forward motion and uh, the lick I'm going to use is the lick we've been using for the past few videos which is just this uh, altered thing. So what that is, it uh, starts on a one, one and two and three and four, it's just up the altered scale, then down a half step to the third, the C major chord. Oh, okay, so that is from the F, seventh of the G7, the third of C major. You can use anything you like to do that as long as it's got the right number of notes. That's fine, for instance. So now I'm using a diminished seventh arpeggio. Uh, with a half step in between, or a little passing tone, just to make the rhythm work. And then a little, a little enclosure thing at the end. That would be more like traditional bebop way to do it, maybe. You can probably think of other ways. Um, but I'm just going to maybe... That's a nice one. I'm going to use this one most of the time. Sorry, <laughs> play it right. And I'll, I'll maybe throw in a few variations in when I'm playing that. But I think as an exercise, you should learn to play that every single time and then go to another lick. And then, you know, just, just so you get these things in, in your ears. Um, I think one of the hardest things when you're first playing changes is to, you know, observing my students is knowing when to change the... Uh, when to when to play the chord you know people tend to anticipate it they, they panic and they play early and I think um, you know like if, if you just kind of know exactly when you went to be doing it then it's a lot easier and I think you have to kind of do it in a kind of by rote counting sort of way until it becomes natural um, well well maybe that's one way to do it uh, for instance okay so let's do this um, the first <laughs> Those, those first one, two, three, four, five, which you know people make a big deal about because it's the cycle of fourths. The first five chords all belong to a flat major. Now you could just play an A flat major arpeggio, but I think my favourite thing to play at the moment in A flat extended areas of A flat, we're just assuming it's all in the same key, and we're just going to play the one chord over the top of it. So what I like to do that is to play the C minor pentatonic, or. It's quite fun sometimes if you omit the flat seven as well. Um, you get this kind of sound, which is a slightly different vibe from putting in the flat seven. But you know, whatever you like, and that's the hip sound over A flat major. Let's see, hopefully you can hear. So it's works over the whole first five and it's the one quarter bars so it's the first five bars two, a one two three four one two three four five that's where we're playing our changing licks so if you just play the minor minor pentatonic through an entire chord progression people are going to say oh you don't know how to play jazz He's a rocker, you know, whatever. But uh, the, the whole point of this is to be able to fool people into into thinking that you know how to play changes. It's just giving them enough information. And that movement to C major is extremely important um, in terms of the story of the tune, to use a sort of Adam Neelyism. Um, so it's kind of important to nail it um, and also set it up. It's like, here comes the big thing. Uh, de, 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 there it is. Exciting stuff. So you're kind of just kind of building up a little bit to that, that change of key. variation there but the same idea right it's using the same scale so I'm going a little bit later I'll do it the way uh, I said I would earlier and I'll resolve 
fourth to C major now. C major is the third. I'm going to build a pentatonic off the third. So, uh, what is it? I'm there. <laughs> but in practice, we don't really have that much time to mess around with that. But I'll just give you an idea of that. So we're going C minor. And then on bar number six, we are hitting uh, that G altered lick. We're going into the E minor pentatonic. It might take you a bit of a while to practice this sort of stuff. Okay, next bit we go. It's the same thing, we're just going to transpose it. So we're going to go uh, G minor. Pentatonic, sorry. Bit of a string ringing there. I've, I've had comments about it before. Um, so yeah, so G minor, pentatonic. You know, it's a not one. You can also do. Like uh, voicings based on the pentatonic scale, you know, variations like this. Which I may tell people about sometimes. Should we get nice some modern comping? Okay, so um, pentatonic is pretty powerful actually. Uh, I'm just kind of getting into it as I play more modern music. Um, so again, it's using the uh, pentatonic of the third of this time. E flat major, which is the key of this bit. Here we go. Which is the same thing as the G7 altered lip, but this time we've we modulated it to uh, D7 uh, into G major. Okay, so let's try that. So, uh, the whole shape of that in a minute, you'll notice that I um, kind of played the G7 lick late and resolved a bit late. I wasn't intending to do that, but it sounded kind of cool. So there you go. Sometimes you find yourself rhythmically changing things around other than what you would expect. And I think the important thing is then always just to kind of relax and stick to your guns, because actually sometimes it comes out sounding really cool, even if it's not what you meant to play. Um, you have to stay relaxed to improvise in time. This is what I have found. So anyway, the, we go uh, from playing C minor pentatonic on the first five bars, and then we get that G7 altered in bar six, and then seven and eight are E minor pentatonic. And then we go on, we then, uh, we're only going to cover the first 16, I think, in this video. Anyway, so we then go on, we have um, a G minor pentatonic. And then we go, um, into this sort of D altered scale, going up from the seventh again. And then we go into a B minor pentatonic. So that sounds hip over the um, over the new key of G major. And then after that's two five ones. And I don't really want to talk about the last 12 because it's quite involved. I'll probably do a um, Let the Tune Be a Teacher video. <laughs> pretty cool huh so I mean you might go well that sounds all right for the first bit but you know I want a little bit more excuse me oh shaky screen uh, a bit more harmonic detail um, so one thing you could do is definitely like we've got these E flat 7 and it sounds a bit kind of vanilla not to make some some kind of a big deal out of that now, an obvious thing we can do right away is we can play the um, you know the altar scale again so you This E flat seven, if we do this, it sounds like an exercise, but it's worth doing. So the E flat seven is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, three, two, three, it's in bar three, right? Let's try that. <laughs> 
case we have a, a B7 coming up so, so we do that there so we go uh, two bars of this one two three and four one two three four one two three so let's do the whole thing hopefully I'll not muck it up ah <laughs> C minor <laughs> let's try that again You do that right okay I, I mucked up stroke made an improvisatory ad lib on the uh, on the last altered phrase but it works you know you go one two three four one <laughs> you know you get a strong resolution there it's just like it's playing with a different rhythm so you can experiment around with that uh, once you get bored of playing the basic exercise the basic exercise the basic exercise why can I not speak the basic exercise which I can't actually play <laughs> anyway, the yeah, last thing I want to talk about very quickly is the fact that you can really play any old thing into any old thing to make a resolution. So instead of using this sort of nice, correct jazz school altered scale, A plus, you could use, um, you know, something really weird, like, what's, what's a strange resolution we could do? Let's use, um, actually I really like it when you come from a dominant seventh or a half step below, so... In some ways it's quite old school, but it doesn't really follow chord scale theory, so it's a good one to use. It won't sound too weird. I mean, they all sound good. Actually, yeah, let's do that. So, I mean, it could be any of the chords that we take, so we could do the same thing. So we've got to find a line that kind of works rhythmically, so one and two and three and four and one. Let's start on beat one, this makes it a bit easier. One and two. nice and then how do we transpose that this bit um, I suppose it would just be that so if you're not keeping track that's a basic dominant seventh uh, arpeggio played from a root half step below the target chord Here we go. So that's uh, just some ideas of how you could do it. Um, you can see that I'm chunking down the tune a lot into very simple bits. Um, bit in A flat, moving to a bit in C, bit in E flat, moving to a bit in G. Um, and then you can add more detail using, uh, you know, the original changes, and arpeggiating those chords or moving to the chord tones. It's a little bit of a, a cheeky way to do it, but I do think that changes playing is often about ignoring certain chords as much as expressing every chord and if you express every chord you can get into a zone where you're a little bit like you know trying to dodge around the changes and it, it can be a bit much um so i hope you find that useful thanks for watching